The government of the ANC plans on increasing taxes in 2024. There's a proverb in the Bible that says, a leader without understanding taxes his people heavily. Nice idea, but it won't help. It'll just formalize the reality that poor countries can never repay their loans. Senator, are, are, are you saying that you're opposed to debt relief for impoverished countries? No, no, we should forgive the debts, but that's not gonna help those countries very much. Okay, what will? Tax cuts. <laughs> Some African tax rates are the highest in the world. In Tanzania, the 30% rate kicks in at $475 of income. Plus, they have a 20% value-added tax gets added to everything you buy. Those, those high tax rates make it impossible to build capital in those countries. So nothing gets built, not, not factories, not roads, not anything. Poor African countries have the lowest wage workers in the world. And yet a company like Nike, for instance, can't, can't, can't put a factory in, in one of those countries because of the oppressive tax rates. Taxes have killed any possibility of economic development. Here's the worst part. You know why those countries have such high tax rates? Because of us. To show us that they can raise enough money to pay back their loans. But taxes can't raise any money if they kill the economies. So it turns out that the, the tragic, unintended consequence of our good, our good intentions toward Africa, our kindness, is that we have encouraged those countries to lock themselves into a gruesome economic depression. If we don't urge those countries to cut their tax rates, they will never grow their economies. People will live lifetimes of unemployment. Disease will be rampant, poverty will be permanent, and children will be hungry. And our charity will never be enough. Never. This is what the ANC government is doing. They don't understand the situation. The South Africans are already suffering at the brink of their finances. They want to increase taxes to raise 15 billion so they can continue to loot it. This is an announcement that they're planning on making to say that they want to actually raise the taxes. South Africans cannot afford another tax increase. The minister's disclosed that there's a budget deficit and he's trying to get South Africans to fork out this money so that they can pay for expenditure by government. That doesn't make sense. South Africa is now the latest country to propose the idea of a wealth tax to bridge their budget gaps from the pandemic. There is a think tank that is whispering into the ear of the government that says they should take as much as 7%. If you don't have a plan to get on the right track, you can have all the money you want, it won't matter. Being a trust fund kid and inheriting 160 billion South African Rand won't solve your problems. You'll squander it the same way they've squandered all the money. They have no plan. This is not coupled with changes to let's reduce tax rates on corporations. Let's go out and try and compete and get, you know, our neighbor Botswana to the north. They're, they're a pretty well-run country. What can we learn from them? None of that. We're going to continue with all the same failed policies, all the same graft, all the same inefficiency and pet projects and corruptions. That's all going to continue. But you're going to pay more. And what it seems from reading this is not only is this just a tax like in the UK where they're saying uh, it's going to be 5% and, you know, of course, some nice you can pay it, you know, 1% over five years. Uh, this appears to be possibly there's one scenario where this could be every single year you're going to pay every year. Now, I understand interest rates in South Africa are a little bit higher than other countries, but my goodness, imagine even 3% every year just handing it over. Eventually, you would be broke. And that's kind of the goal. You have a country that believes that the more people that are broke, as long as there are lots of people who are just like barely just over broke and who thank the government for their success, that's a successful country. I would like you to point me to one country where the entire population is barely surviving. And that's the definition of success. But apparently that's what South Africa wants because they want to tax the people who have something rather than encouraging investment, they're encouraging them to leave. We're talking about expenditure that they're spending on ESCOM to disband it. Expenditure that they're spending on frivolous things that only lead to corrupt politicians stealing more from the people. 
Over 60% of the taxes in this country comes from citizens, from the working class. We can't afford to continue to increase the tax when fuel is so high. People can't afford to pay for transport to work every day. Education is so high. The cost of living. The increase in cost of living has become a matter of survival for families who have to make hard decisions about what is a need, what is a luxury, and finding a balance between the two. I have to choose for the trips, uh, and then sometimes I have to leave the longer trip because I don't have a petrol and I have to take the small trip because of I need the cash to put the petrol. Electricity hikes. Literally everything in South Africa is increasing in, t in prices. And our people are suffering. We can't allow a government that continues to squeeze even the last bit from people to the point of no return where our people have nothing left because they're trying to spend or rather fund their corrupt activities. I think the best way for them to save more money is cut down on wasteful expenditure first of all, but they actually need to increase their tax revenue by creating more jobs and upskilling people. It is just a matter of them refocusing the money from where, like now, SAA, we've been appealing out SAA many occasions. Billions of friends have been used to fund a, a parastate house, to, 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 to solve the problems of parastate house. That money can be refocused or can be rechanneled. Efficiencies. I believe one's got to, one's got to look at efficiencies. If your roads are not being timely repaired, then your repair costs are going to be more when you do it. And so it's looking at being efficient in everything they do and the switching time saves none. So my opinion is, if the government officials were being paid minimum wage in the first place, we'd have more honest people, okay, less motivated by money in the first place, and the billions and millions and trillions that are being spent by them wouldn't be an issue in the first place. Because if you had to take their collective salaries, and I don't know them, but just from the things that you hear in the newspapers, like, you know, what they spend on travelling allowances and improving their homes and that sort of thing, that money alone can cover the cost that they're looking for. If there's any money that needs to be taken, it needs to be taken from the 600 million that politicians share every year from government that they get given. Let's start taking from there. Let's cut the money that political parties get. If we want to save anything in this country, let's save from the perks and the advantages and the abuse that politicians continue to put South Africans through. We can't afford to raise taxes. South Africans are already paying for everything through the roof. They can no longer afford any more tax increases. In fact, this government should be lowering taxes to ensure that South Africans can survive under an economy that has no jobs, lack of economic growth, and that continues to steal from them on a daily basis. It's an insult to the working class and majority of South Africans to continue increasing taxes and expecting them to pay for a government that is not servicing them. We need to vote wisely. We need to ensure that come 2024, we vote for the right government that can take out this corrupt government out and ensure that a government that cares and truly thinks about its people is instilled in 2024. Vote for Arise South Africa. Vote for a righteous government.